Hey everyone, welcome to day three of our seven day ASA class. In this episode, we're gonna dive deeper into 101 because day four in the morning was exam day. If you wanna go over some of the ASA 101 test questions or the information that you're gonna need, that'll be at the end of the video. And I'm gonna put a timestamp below in the description. That's right, I'm getting all techy but like that you can have the option to go to the end of the video for the test questions if you won't hurt my feelings. Well, yeah, you will, but whatever. If you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe, comment, or to click on the little bell button. So. Uh, we made it through the storm, and now we have a beautiful sunset, and apparently we're gonna be serenaded tonight. Night two. Um, we had a pretty bad storm last night. It rained the entire night. It's still raining now. We had a ton of lightning. A ton, ton, ton of lightning and thunder all night. Not the greatest day. And today's actually officially the first day of... Oh my god. Today's actually the first day of lessons because the other catamaran with the other instructor came down yesterday. And I think they spent the entire day basically on the boat, I don't know, trying to get down here. We were supposed to meet up with them last night, but we never saw them. I don't know where they ended up going, but I swear to God, it seemed like the lightning was right outside the boat. Anyway, he kind of quizzed me a little bit on some of the test questions for the first ASA 101, and I got like half of them wrong, so I'm really concerned. And I knew them all. Problem was that I slept nothing the night before. I was exhausted, sailing all day. So I'm gonna use that as an excuse. Because <laughs> I did, when I got the answers from him, I was like, duh. So I think I know the, I know the stuff, I just, it was an exhausting day, so. Oh, and all the windows leak. So I got to sleep with towels right here. This one's soaking wet. Soaking wet. My sheets are soaking wet. Donovan had a couple of wet spots there from his window. Oh, nice. Got people right outside my window. <laughs> Walking around the boat. No privacy here. So yeah, things to look forward to when we own our boat. Leaky windows, probably constantly. I did ask the instructor about the bathrooms. I was like, do the newer cats have nicer bathrooms? Because this one's gross. And he said they did with the electric toilets instead of the pump. So hopefully they're much, much nicer than what we have here. All right, I gotta get up. I gotta study, have breakfast. And I'm not really sure what we're gonna do today because we had it all planned out last night. We had the whole day planned out, but we weren't expecting that it was gonna rain until like five o'clock this afternoon. So we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. <laughs> Maybe he'll find us a shower somewhere. <laughs> Today is Monday and it's officially the first day of our class. But things were a little bit different because we had to um, uh, make some rearrangements with what we were doing because of the weather that we've been having. Long story short, today is the official first day. It is 10.30, so when we got up this morning after breakfast, we sat down out here comfortably and had our first class and talked about ASA questions for 101, 102, and 103. He kind of gave us an idea of what the plan of attack was, and today we're going to do man overboard, and we're going to learn how to dock. So I think we're headed to Boca Chica, which is south of us. Uh, what did I say yesterday? Around 11 point something nautical miles. Beautiful day, very windy. We're kind of squished uh, in between two storm systems. We're sandwiched, so we're taking advantage of it. Actually, I haven't even checked the weather in the last two hours, so it could be completely different by now. But this morning we were sandwiched. I got a good walk in this morning for about a mile or so. Found a bathroom for the park service, so that was TMI, I know, but uh, our instructor took his bath this morning. He jumped into the water and got soaking wet and then he came back out, soaked up and shampooed and then he used that hose down there to rinse 
off the fresh water. I will be very happy to do that this afternoon. Getting used to this roughing it situation. Last night we cooked out, even though it was pouring rain, we cooked out some hamburgers on the grill there. That was nice. Made a salad because we wanted to start using the provisioning that we did. We wanted to start using the stuff that was gonna go bad first and work our way later in the week into the stuff that doesn't go bad fast, so. So here's a perfect learning experience. Who is the giveaway boat? Okay. I'm trying to see how his sails are. We're on a port tack and they're on a starboard tack. So we have to give way to them. So the wind is coming up on our port side, but the wind for them is coming up on their starboard side. So they have the right of way and we need to give way to them. Now obviously here we're in a huge open water so there's no traffic or anything that you know could cause any issues but he's slowly quizzing us throughout the day. Mostly me. <laughs> he's always looking at me when he's asking the questions. No pressure but that's good. He's quizzing us so that when we take the first exam we feel ready. So Donovan's at the helm. He got the the little marina, whatever it's called this morning. We put the sails up while we were still in calm wind. And then once the sail was, the main sail was up, we came out and started putting the jib up. We good? That's where we're at. It is at this point of the day that we started practicing the man overboard drills. We each took turns at the helm, being the spotter, adjusting the sail so that we could do our figure eight to get back to the man overboard. And the last person had a hook so that we could pick up Bob, our man overboard, who was actually a flotation device that we just threw in the water. I think we each took about two to three turns at the helm doing the figure eight so that we could have a chance to get closer and closer to the man overboard. And all went well, Bob survived. So when you're under sail and there is a man overboard, you want to make sure that, that the boat is pointing on a close reach point of sail. Whoever discovers the man overboard is going to yell out man overboard and they need to keep their eye on that man overboard throughout the entire exercise. You're also going to practice slowing down the sailboat. You're going to hold the boat on a close reach while under sail. You're then going to release the jib sheet so the jib starts luffing. Then you'll release the main sheet so that the main sail starts luffing and you'll see that the boat starts to slow down so you can pick up your man overboard. The cold? It's not, it actually feels really good. It's so sorry. So sorry. It's actually hot. It's really hot. Well, it's connected to the engine, baby. Possibly one of the best showers I've ever taken. <laughs> I could get used to this for sure. I mean, it looks beautiful from out here, color is aquamarine or whatever. Donovan's at the helm. The two other guys are, what is that? Police? I don't know what they are. It looks like a Humvee on a life raft. Those houses, I don't know if you can see this far, but all the way at the distance, those houses are on stilts. And my understanding is that there was quite a few of them. And whenever the wind or mother nature or hurricane comes down and knocks them down, they don't rebuild. They're not allowed to. So that's what's left of the few. Nine, well, there's nine clumps of something. Well, no, one of them's a boat. I don't know. They don't look like houses anymore. It just looks like a pile of wood. You get wet in the salt water, and then you come out and you get this hose, and that's fresh water. And so you shampoo and wash yourself and all the guys were sailing so they were tacking and doing their thing so they were paying attention to the boat so I had complete and total privacy and it was amazing. This is 
is what we're doing right now, and this is the part of the exam that I'm gonna fail miserably. We found our dead reckoning, which is uh, you look in the binoculars and it tell and you pick two points in the horizon, and the binoculars tell you what your longitude and latitude is. So we're here, and we're going here, and so we plotted our course. We're gonna go this way, and with these things, we figured it was gonna be eight nautical miles. And then you do distance over speed and time. So the distance is eight nautical miles. The speed, we're doing six knots right now. So the time, it's gonna be like about an hour and a half. So that's what we're doing now. And I'm so confused, I can't see straight. If you have to study for an exam, this isn't a bad way to go. I'm studying for my ASA and watching for dolphins. Donovan saw a bunch of crabs when he was laying up here earlier. This is called Boca Chica, and Miami is directly behind us, but you can barely see it because there's so many clouds, and I think a storm was brewing over there. All right, everything in red is the stuff I still need to memorize. <laughs> Got a while to go, and the test, I think, is tomorrow. The instructor's talking. What's he saying? Oh. He's telling us where we're gonna go and dock the boat depending on how many other boats there are, if it's full or not. <laughs> so normally there's more boats over there. <laughs> so we may end up staying on the right. We'll see. Best connection, he says, is over by the lighthouse. So note to everybody, watching this episode in the future. If you come to Boca Chica and you need internet, go by the lighthouse. You're welcome. This is Boca Chica, and both of these boats are also students from the same school. And we're going to the beach to hang out for a little bit and do some swimming. Heavenly. been a couple of weeks but I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I remember from the ASA 101 exam so take some notes if you want know the parts of the boat the sail the mast the boom the stern the bow the, know what port and starboard are windward versus leeward not leeward Lu leeward leeward it's spelled completely differently than it's pronounced just to make our lives easier also know the location of the cabin, the head, the galley, salon, cockpit, transom, tiller, stanchion, keel, rudder, companionway, all of those parts. You're going to want to know what the beam is and then the difference between the freeboard and the draft. Know the difference between running rigging and standing rigging. Know the parts of the sail. So you got the clue, the tack, the luff, the foot, the head, the leech, and know what the battens are. So you got also your points of sail. Got in irons or the no sail zone and then you have your close haul, your close reach, your beam reach, and your broad reach. Ooh, I remembered all those without looking. On the quiz, they had little pictures of sailboats pointing in different directions, and then they had all of the points of sail, A, B, C, D, E, and you had to match them all up. Look at the drawings very carefully. Two of them are really close, and it's really one or the other. It's eeny, meeny, miny, mo, because that's how close or similar the pictures are. Know your direction of sail, like forward, port, starboard, beam, astern, the windward side of the boat versus the leeward side of the boat. Knowing which way the boat needs to be pointing when you want to put your sails up. So if it's pointing in towards the wind, the luff of the sail is going to slide right up the mast a lot easier, and it's also going to prevent the sail from filling up with air. Know the difference between tacking and jibing. To head up into the wind, that's called heading up. If you're turning away from the wind, you're bearing away. Know the definition of reefing and when it's necessary. Oh, um, I'll read this one because I always get them confused, but when you want to head up to the wind, it's called a weather helm. When you want to bear away from the wind, it's called lee helm. Know the name of all of the dock lines and what each one is used 
used for. There's quite a few questions on stand-on vessel versus the giveaway vessel. Remember that everybody has a responsibility to be on the lookout regardless whether you're the stand-on or the giveaway. Everybody needs to avoid a collision. The giveaway vessel must give early and substantial warning or action so the stand-on vessel knows exactly what the intentions are. It dives a little bit into the navigational lights. I think there was a question on the difference if it's a motorboat or a sailboat. The part with the channel markers and the bu buoys. Buoys? I don't, I've never been able to pronounce that. Buoy. Buoy. <laughs> Just know that stuff. Red right return, they're gonna show you like a little diagram of a channel with the Y split. You're gonna practice anchoring from the beginning of the class, from the get-go. First time you anchor, just pay attention to what all the names of the parts are while you're anchoring, because those are gonna probably be quiz questions. There will be a question about float plans. So the instructor was quizzing us basically throughout the first couple of days on knots. He had a bunch of lines hanging near the helms and he was paying attention and watching what you were doing and quizzing you. But for purposes of the actual written test, I remember there was a couple of descriptions. I don't remember there being pictures, which would have been for me a lot easier. They had name of the knot and then a description of what they do. So that one was a little bit some of them were a little tough, but I do remember there was a bowline, there was a cleat hitch, clove hitch, and I always confuse the clove hitch and the, the round turn with the two half hitches. So basically the clove hitch you can use on the fenders when you're coming and going and you don't need them to be secure for a long period of time. But if you're doing an overnight and you want to make sure that you don't lose your fenders, you want to use the half and two hitches. I don't know why they make the name so confusing. Know your parts of the motor. I thought those were super easy. I know the parts of our motor on our sail boat, but I almost got a couple wrong because the little picture, in my opinion, just was really hard to tell. And maybe I'm just the only one, but there was two in particular that I was just like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think one was the gear shift and one was the starter cord. And I was like, which one's which, which one's which? And I ended up guessing and got that right miraculously. So hopefully this information helps you. I'm not trying to give you all the answers because obviously you need to learn all of this on your own. But if you're a very anxious person like I am and you're not a good test taker, I just want to help you feel at ease. You're going to be nervous if you're like me, no matter what. So just pay attention to the instructor. They're basically never really saying anything that is wasteful. In other words, if they're speaking and it's sailing related, it's most likely something you need to know. So they make that a lot easier. Not that they're trying to give you the answer, but you need to learn the stuff anyway. So like when we were anchoring, I couldn't remember what the word windless meant at the time, but just by doing the actual anchoring every afternoon, I got practice with it and I heard the instructor say the word every day and so it just kind of you start catching on so by the time you take the test the instructor has talked about everything and it's really I'm not gonna say it's easy pay attention to the wording on every single question don't rush through it and you'll be fine so good luck <laughs> you want to release the jeep sheet <laughs> sorry um but I'll put a description but I'll put a I'll edit that out Maybe. We each, we each, we each, <laughs> we each took turns. I think we each took two turns. Oh God, I can't talk.